Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up custom states and triggers for our AI system. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, I've actually just opened up the 01 state idle scene. Uh, this should work with any uh, AI though in your own scene or use one of our uh, pre-made scenes. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, let's go ahead and jump into making a custom state. So if you come through our hierarchy down to this uh, states scripts folder, you'll see a file named state skeleton. And what you want to do is duplicate that. Uh, I just use control D. I believe it's uh, Command D on the Mac. Uh, and let's go ahead and remove this. And what we're actually going to do is let's uh, just for instance, let's make a follow mouse state. So, what this state is going to do is whenever the mouse is over some geometry, it'll cast array just to make sure that there's something there and then it'll tell the AI to walk to that point. So let me go ahead and uh, let's copy that name and uh, open it up and it's still named State Skeleton. We just simply need to paste that in to replace it. And what we want is we want in action. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, set up a ray, we'll call it ray equals, and uh, we want to just go ahead and get the uh, the main camera um, for now. I'll show you in a minute how we can actually put in any camera we want if you indeed wanted to make your state behave that way. Uh, so let's go ahead and do camera dot main dot screen point to ray and the screen point we want is uh, wherever the mouse is located on the screen so let's do input dot mouse position uh, what we're also going to need is a raycast hit because we need uh, to actually know where the ray hit in the scene so raycast hit and now let's just simply do an if physics dot raycast and we need the ray we need the hit and we need to tell it the distance we're just going to go with infinity it's not always the best option but in this case it'll work uh, and then let's go ahead and what we want to do is we are passing through this function the uh, AI behaviors class. So we do fsm dot uh, move agent and we want the agent to move to the hit point and what we already have as a derived property is movement speed and rotation speed. Okay, so let's go back into our scene. And one thing that you'll notice uh, right off the bat if you look under here is make sure that the advanced tab or the advanced toggle is checked and click on uh, the drop down and what you can already see is the follow mouse state is automatically recognized. Uh, notice we did not have to add it through code in any way. Our system automatically just sees it. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's click back on our yeah. Let's change this state, the patrol state, to 
uh, follow mouse state. Let's make our initial state follow mouse. And now, let's, actually let's delete this first person controller. Uh, just to make it easier to see, let's do create a camera. Let's zero that out. I think we need it 90 degrees pointing down. Let's go into the scene view, that would be easier. Let's move it up. Let's go back to the game view and we will just move that up. Okay. Make sure this is tagged camera main since we're, or main camera since we're using the uh, camera dot main uh, accessor there. Okay, and let's go ahead and play. So we can ignore this right here. So it's now following the mouse wherever it goes. Except for it should not when we go out here because there's no geometry. But the second we hit geometry, it should follow it. Okay. So let's uh, let's make this a little more uh, realistic in the gaming sense. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, oh, and by the way, this uh, class does not need to be sitting in this folder. Uh, you can put a new folder, let's call it custom AI components. Let's go ahead and move the follow mouse state in there. And let's just just because let's just put it out there. So you can uh, keep your uh, components separate from uh, from our system as far as uh, your file structure. Uh, let's go ahead now and let's make a custom trigger. And we also have this trigger skeleton right here. So let's go ahead and duplicate that file. Use control D again. And let's call this uh, mouse down trigger. And again, let's copy that name. Let's open it up and just paste right over on the name. All right, now uh, this evaluate method will probably be the one that you use the most. You may never touch the init method. Um, there may be times when you need to, uh, but for the most part, you probably will never need this. Uh, evaluate uh, is definitely a method you will need to change. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look here. So if you return true on here, it means that the trigger had been triggered. Uh, so let's go ahead and set this up. Let's delete this variable. That's just for uh, just so that you can understand it when you look at it for the first time. Uh, what we want is if the mouse down uh, occurs, then we want to change the state, which that code is already in there for you, and then return true. So let's go ahead and do it. If input dot get mouse button down, and that'll be zero is the uh, left mouse button. Let's go ahead and save that. So now this trigger um, should now just simply show up just like the state did in the uh, in the AI system. So uh, what we're going to do is take a look here. Let's click on idle. And sure enough, right there, mouse down. So let's go ahead and actually uh, check that. And let's say when the mouse uh, is down, go to follow mouse. 
Alrighty, we will need to change the initial state to idle. And let's uh, let's go ahead and play that. So now when I click the left mouse button, he should f he should automatically go into that follow mouse state. So let's click, and now he is going into this state. Again, you could ignore that error. That uh, has nothing to do with what we're doing right now. Um, alrighty. So, of course, the problem is is when you have a a uh, mouse down trigger, uh, which actually, you know what? Let's move this. We can close that folder. Let's move that into our custom AI components folder also. And since we already have that class, let's go ahead and make a, a mouse up trigger. So control D. And let's do mouse up trigger. Open that up. And let's do mouse up trigger yeah let's call that mouse button up so now what we can do is let's go to the follow mouse state and click mouse up and when the mouse is up let's go back to the idle state so what that'll do is when I'm holding down on the mouse, like I am right now, it will follow the mouse, and then when I click up, it'll stop. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And let's just do one more thing. Let's add just a, a simple variable in here. Uh, Let's do public int uh, button index equals uh, zero. Let's, uh, let's copy that. Let's uh, put button index in here instead. And the same thing for the mouse down trigger. I'm going to go ahead and paste that code that I just copied button index and our system automatically adds that to the custom inspector so let's uh, put one there and we're in the fall now so let's go to idle and put one there and now what should happen is when I click the left mouse button, it shouldn't do anything. But if I click the right mouse, because index 1 is the right mouse, then that should start working. So let me, uh, actually let's do one more thing. And that would be with the follow mouse state. Let's go ahead and public camera um, let's see the camera that we want let's call it uh, just because let's call it raycast camera and instead of camera dot main let's do uh, uh, Raycast camera. And where are we? Follow mouse. And it automatically, uh, these are all general properties that apply to every state. And at the bottom of that should be any other properties that you define inside your uh, state. So, Raycast camera. Let's go ahead and just put uh, this camera in there. 
and uh, and now we're using a uh, in a, a a field or a property uh, to use a specific camera instead of always having to go to main camera. Actually, we can untag that now because we're not concerned about which camera, uh, which tag it has. We're just concerned about uh, the fact that that's the one that's assigned. So anyway, I hope that gets you started on creating your own uh, custom states and triggers, and I hope that this uh, this system really helps you out. Have a good day, and we'll see you all later.